Riley Casper Wang from Sapphire. on our prices. It wasn't until well after graduation or grad school that I decided I wanted to make the move into venture. Started my career at Goldman Sachs doing much more finance, M&A, IPO work, so saw kind of the, you know, growth into the public markets, but, you know, I'll just take a snippet of that. Step one is, is getting in the door, right? When we talk about networks and, um, and as Casper mentioned, you know, the, the kind of not just willingness, but excitement and curiosity that you have not only in this room and among your other founder community, but among investors as well to go and have that coffee and, and seek that time. And what I think really resonates with me, even in kind of that, that initial cold email, cold, you know, cold LinkedIn message, um, or that, uh, that warm intro that comes in, is curiosity and passion, right? And how do you have that come through in a very short and succinct and crystallized way? Because that as well. You know, there were certain moments, there were certain days at each of the companies where I thought, man, we hit a wall. I'm not sure we're going to make it through to the other side of this wall. And so what do you do, right? You focus on keeping the main thing the main thing and focusing on those things that you can control and trying to see around corners. And that's how I see my, my role as an investor and as a board member for a lot of the companies I partner with. How do I help you see around corners? How do I, you're so focused on building this company, building this product, driving this go to market. And sometimes you're not seeing necessarily, nor should you be focusing too much on the forest. And so it's my role to help you see what's going on with the rest of the forest. And if you make this decision, what might be around the corner there? So the advice I give is a, a couple different things. The first one is there is actually, a, yes, the macro environment is tough. Yes, there's going to be you know much more longer diligence processes, much more scrutiny when it comes to fundraising than you saw in the kind of whiz bang early stage you know, fundraising getting done in a couple of days. So expect that it's going to pre prepare for it to take a, a bit longer than it has in the last two years. That being said, this is also an incredible time to start a company before we were seeing such, um, such froth in the labor market. With a little bit of an introduction with all of you, um, how you got into being at the startup that you're at and uh, what does the startup do? In platform teams is not core to your business. That's not where you want to invest money and time. Uh, you want to rather focus on solving a business problem, right? Uh, one of the things, uh, you know, as we saw was, you know, companies are kind of moving to cloud. You know, you have different services available, like, you know, I can use App Engine to run, uh, for example, you know, various microservices. It takes literally five minutes to build and deploy a service. Uh, and I could end up with, as Ganesh said, hundreds of services. How do I orchestrate across all of them, maintain my state, provide all the operationals? <laughs> Obviously, adhere to local market demand and the nuances of that market, but also ensure that scalability in your organization. So we say still that you need to revisit customer discovery, to relearn things in that local market. And then later, you have to align your. You say you have to take a validated model in your initial market and run it through two filters: one, government uh, and regulation, and another thing is culture. And to the point of government and regulation, when you then scale into uh, Middle East, as an example, you have to uh, stand up a joint venture. 